Now we're going to talk about neurodegenerative diseases. And this is a whole family of diseases that include uh, diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, Huntington's, um, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, um, a, even uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, uh, various prion diseases, et cetera. So they all have something in common. And, and the first thing they have in common is that they are age dependent. They are way more likely to occur with age. And that gives us a big clue. Uh, it is a difficult endeavor to be a neuron and to last a lifetime. So this gives you a hint as to why it's so difficult. Here's a, a neuron. And neurons are basically, say, 25 microns in diameter. That's a, that's a, a rough, um, you know, that's a common size of a, of a neuron. And it has an axon that can be two meters long. And so this 25 meter cell body that is responsible for all the manufacturing, all the blueprints for the entire cell, uh, it, all, all the supporting of the entire cell has to keep this two meter long process healthy for seven, eight, nine, even 10 decades. That's asking a lot. Now, how long is this? Well, 25 microns is to two meters as one stride, one meter, is to the circumference of the Earth. So we are talking a long distance. Now, what has, to, what has to happen along this axon? Well, there are things that are made here in the cell body that have to travel all the way to the end, to the synaptic terminal. And then there are things that happen out here that are picked up. There are trophic factors that are picked up at the target that have to travel back to tell the, the cell body what's going on. And there's also garbage. There's garbage. We don't have a dumpster down at the, at the synaptic terminal. We have to go to the dumpster that's in the cell body. So garbage has to come back. Uh, very useful products have to go forward. And these things happen through what's called axonal transport. Axonal transport happens down the axon and includes uh, microtubules forming lanes. And the microtubules will form different lanes to, at different times. The transport is going both in the forward direction, the anterior, anterior grade direction, and in the backward direction, retrograde. So garbage is going retrograde. Uh, new vesicles of neurotransmitter are going anterograde. The microtubules uh, don't, don't know how to form their lanes. They are instructed by a molecule called tau, T-A-U. So tau forms, it, it, it unforms and forms new lanes. And it directs the axonal transport traffic. Now, Imagine that you had a problem, a mutation that reduced the efficiency of tau or of a microtubule uh, molecule by less than 1%, vastly less than 1%. For the first year, no problem. For the first decade, no problem. For the first 50 years, no problem. Now you're on to 70 years, and you've got some accumulated damage because even an infinitesimal decrease in the ability to transport substances back and forth has now built up damage over the course of time. And this is essentially what happens in neurodegeneration. Now, there is an, there's another contribution, and this, contribu this other contribution came to light by our understanding of prion disease. Prion disease is a disease that is caused not by a virus, not by a bacteria, not by um, a fun fungus, not by any uh, typical infectious uh, uh, unit, but by a proteinaceous infectious unit. And the proteinaceous infectious unit is the reason why it's called a prion. So how can a protein cause a problem? The way that these uh, prions cause problems is that it's a molecule and 
uh, let's just go over to the board. This will be a little clearer. It's a normal molecule, PRP cell, PRPC. I believe this is a capital P. So prion protein C. And there is in uh, some individuals also a diseased version of this. And this, this was discovered, this is for uh, scrapie, which is um, a disease of sheep. And so there is a, uh, a, a, the same amino acids, the same sequence of amino acids. What's the difference between these two? Just the way that those amino acids are folded. So the conformation is different. Uh, in this one, it's more of a beta sheet. In this one, it's more of a fibril. And these fibrils get attached to each other, and they become uh, an insoluble fi fibril. So the other thing that they do is that they now recruit this PRP cell to become PRP scrapey. So they're going to change the conformation of the normal protein into the bad type of protein. So now you have these insoluble fibrils. They've accumulated. You've got a lot of them. They bust out of the cell. There's, that means more garbage to bring back from the synaptic terminals. It's a, it's a, uh, a heavier um, burden on, on the neuron. Um, and so uh, you, it, uh, the injury to the cell, to the neuron, uh, accumulates. And in the next slide, what we see here, uh, this is these uh, tangles. These are um, tangles that are accumulated. They're insoluble fibrils that are in, present in Alzheimer's disease. So in different types of diseases, the fibrils tend to be different. So for example, in Alzheimer's disease, a lot of the accumulated aggregates of protein are of uh, beta amyloid. Whereas in a disease such as Hunting Huntington's disease, there might be accumulations of Huntington, a protein called Huntington. Um, in uh, Parkinson's, there might be accumulations of alpha synuclein. But there also might be uh, accumulations that, that of, of multiple types of fibrils. And amongst these are tau fibrils. And so ta these are often uh, termed tauopathies. These are diseases that revolve around tau and its partners in axonal transport. Now, once a, diseased, uh, a disease affects a neuron, it ends up go having effects that cross the synapse. So for example, if the primary uh, target is a neuron in the frontal lobe, a secondary target might be a neuron in the temporal lobe. And this is, this is the case in, in a disease such as frontotemporal de dementia. In Parkinson's, the primary target where, uh, uh, of a neuron that, that, that dies is the dopamine-producing cells in the midbrain that project to the striatum, that part of the basal ganglia. So the upshot of this is, is that there are these different types of neurodegenerative diseases have a, a common uh, mechanism where there is repeated uh, folding um, into these insoluble fibrils and that that causes uh, damage to the neurons. One of the most, uh, at first, it was very exciting and unexpected, at least to most of us, that the mechanism that gives rise to prion disease also is uh, influential in um, these other diseases, such as Alzheimer's, Huntington's, Parkinson's. It also has been um, surprising that, in fact, in chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is common in uh, American football players, uh, football players that play American football, either in high school, even in high school, certainly in college, and certainly in the, in, uh, the NFL, that these individuals have a encephalopathy that 
also uh, follows the same rules as prion disease and Parkinson's and, and um, Huntington's. Now, there's one, one more, um, one more th uh, feature that I should mention here, which is that some of these neurodegenerative diseases are what are called polyglutamine diseases. They have repeats of CAG in the genetic code. And these CAG, CAG is the um, codon that produces a glutamine. And so they have these polyglutamine, these stretches of long stretches of glutamine. And those glutamine stretches are very sticky and they make insoluble fibrils. They tend to become insoluble fi fibrils at a very, um, uh, at a higher rate than, than other proteins. So for example, Huntington's is a CAG repeat disease. It's a polyglutamine uh, disease. And these, uh, these diseases, they're gonna get stickier and, and more apt to uh, cause damage with every generation because with every generation, the number of repeats tends to increase. It does not go down, it, it increases. So the time of uh, diagnosis, the, the age of diagnosis will decrease across generations. And we'll see it, a few of these uh, polyglutamine uh, disorders uh, as, we, as we go through the course. Okay, so now we're gonna go we're going to leave neurons and glia, progenitor cells, bye-bye, and we're going to go and look at how the nervous system develops in an interest in, uh, of understanding the anatomy of the nervous system.